Good day, good talks. My name is Karen Mazzucchere. I'm the author and publisher of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks, and welcome to 1.6 Under Market Failure. Okay, uh, we have a slightly different graph, like the opposite of the one we had in 1.4, I think. And uh, that's the video I did just before this one. And uh, you will see they follow each other in the playlist. So this one says, study the graph below and answer the questions that follow. Now, <clears throat> the only the difference here we can clearly see already that we have two demand curves and one supply curve. And I like the way they did this one because they, they instead of just saying supply, they also showed that this one represents marginal private cost. The only thing I feel like they left out is that it's equal to marginal social cost. Yes, it's the the because uh uh okay, uh, if I say what I want to say already, I'm giving it away as the type of externality. But uh, let me leave it there. Then I'll say it as after I say what type of externality is this, because I want you to think. So which type of good would give you uh, like a private benefit? Well, all of them, both demerit and merit, they'll give you private benefit. Let me pick two opposites. Education, I benefit if I consume it because I gain knowledge. Cig cigarettes or alcohol, I benefit because I get drunk and maybe I like the feeling of being drunk. Those who smoke weed, they get high. So they enjoy the feeling of being high and, uh, you know, they, they know what it does to them. Okay. Uh, then with that said, uh, so... We cannot really distinguish. How about cost? Yes, I incur costs for education because I pay school fees. How do I incur costs on cigarettes? Yes, because I buy them. So both negative and positive are the same with regards to this. The distinction comes when we talk about how each of the two affects third parties. Uh, let's start with cigarettes. Cigarettes would affect third parties in a negative way. So it will affect them cost-wise. So it will then have to have another supply curve. So basically this one is one because no, n the community does not pay school fees for you. So you going to school does not cost the community anything. It costs the individual that decides to go to school. However, if we look at the the benefit side, if I smoke cigarettes, I benefit. If I go to class, I benefit. Okay. Now, which of the two will benefit the community? Let's say I drink. How would that benefit the community? In no way. So this definitely is not a positive, is not a negative externality because it wouldn't benefit the community, but it would cost the community. Uh, as I'm drunk, I could drive like I'm crazy and then I could bump an innocent child and they'll die because of my drinking. Uh, I could smoke next to someone who has health problems and they can end up in hospital tonight. Well, that's a, that's a cost to the community. Now, is that included in the market price? The answer is no. So basically, that's an externality because it's affecting third parties either positively or negatively. And that effect is not included in the price. For that, then government should intervene. Okay, now, so clearly I'm giving this away as a positive externality for that reason. Because when we consume education, it affects third parties positively. So that's why we have a separate demand curve which represents the social benefit showing that the private benefit is not equal to the social benefit there is a benefit to the individual consuming it there is also a benefit to the com com uh, community uh, at large okay then in this case the community does not incur a cost in your education you incur that cost by yourself so this will only represents the marginal private cost as in the cost to the individual Okay, let's go to the questions after analyzing the graph. So before we go there, this Q represents the quantity supplied by the 
the, 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 the free operating market, which in this case is undersupply because markets fail to quantify the external benefit and add that to um, the market price. Then this one here shows that uh, the price also, it does not include the external benefit that consuming a merit good has. Now, what type of externality is depicted? This is positive, like we said. Number two, define the concept externality. I did it a thousand times. These are costs or benefits to third parties which are not included in the market price of the good or service that is being consumed. Then number three, give two appropriate examples of such an externality. Well, education, healthcare, I'll give you those two. Then how can this type of externality lead to market failure? Well, it takes us to what market failure is, and I defined it in the previous video. It is failure of markets to allocate resources at an optimum level, right? Now, markets have a tendency of undersupplying merit goods and oversupplying demerit goods. So with that said, in this case, this is market failure because markets are undersupplying a good that has an ex a positive ex uh, externality or a positive benefit to the community, a benefit actually to the community. And um, so markets are failing because they fail to quantify and include the external benefit in um you know so so for that we'll find government intervening and bringing up consumption of such goods okay let me bring up the answers then we can see right uh we said this is positive yes we got it right then define the concept externality these are costs or benefits this is a must if you just say costs you are not defining externalities you are defining negative if you just say benefit you are defining defining uh positive externalities and these are to the third party which are not included in the market price yes so markets are failing for that government needs to intervene uh, these are examples of uh, positive externalities education healthcare water conservation that's weird uh, and then accept any other relevant answers. Okay, then how can this type of externality lead to market failure? Point E, which one is point E? This one, okay. Point E, okay, let's see. Point E represents positive private costs and benefits where quantity produced is Q at... um. Okay, so basically they're saying, yeah, this is the cost and benefit to the individual. Then society uh, demands Q1 units at a price of P1. Okay, uh, if the external benefit would be taken into account, uh, the equilibrium should be at C, yeah, which is that other point other than E, uh, rather than E, where more, where more would then be produced, yeah then markets fail because they produce less than what is required by the society. Then the government intervenes to subsidize the shortfall in the production. Well, I kind of like these responses and uh, it has brought us to the end of this video. Thank you so much. God bless.